Where do you think you're going? Don't tell the talk. Ah, shut up, you pasty faced halookers. Apples. 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 Hey, Annie. Come around to the house sometime. I got a lot of silverware hanging around loose. <laughs> oh, hello, Susie. How's business? That's a good over there, Paula. Well, go over to the casino. They got a hit over there. That's all? I'll go right over it. Thanks. Yeah. You know, if you change your tune once in a while, perhaps you'd have better luck, huh? <laughs> Dave, the dude wants to see you, Annie. He's over to Missouri Martin. Yeah, I know. I was picking, Smiley. Terrible. Looks like everybody's broke. Must be tough on them. Ah, stop yapping. Didn't you hear the president over the radio? I tell you, get on over to the casino. They got a hit over there. They have? Sure. Spread it around. Don't forget about Missouri Martin. The dude said it was important. All right, I won't. Apple. Apple. Oh, let me get my lamps on One who's strong and tan Send me up a Samson Ah, oh, there was a man Not to me, Casanova Was just an also ram I'd say, Cas, move over Ram! I want a man now, Old Solomon, he had a wife for each blessed day, and I could go for old song in a greater, bigger way. Oh, honest, I'm not joking. Since my passion began, I'm so hot, I'm smoking. I want a man. <laughs> What is it? What's the mystery? Dave, the dude has a big bet on him. Yeah? What kind of a bet? Shh. He'll have to scare the fly. The fly? Dave bet the Greek that the fly landed his piece of sugar first. Oh. What do you say, dude? 500 more? You're on. Okay. Now, what do you think you're doing, Shakespeare? I'm decoying him. Do it over to your mouth. <laughs> Tough luck, dude. That's 1500 you owe me. I bet the Greeks got them flies trained. Uh, well, now that the animal act's over, let's get going. Yeah, we better get going. Let's blow. Come on. Hey, dude, I'll give you a chance to get even. Nothing doing. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is a lot of hokum, playing around with flies when the real sucker's waiting for us, with real dough. What's the matter, handsome? No luck. I should have known better than bet without my apple. I'm gonna find Apple Annie. You're not going out searching for her now. Hey, listen, Happy, this is one of the biggest stud games I've ever sat in. I'm not taking any chances. Look what just happened to me. I even lost to the Greek. Did I ever tell you about the fellow who was superstitious, about a hunchback? He went out looking for him one day, and he got run over by a truck. Yeah, a fellow told me it was hard luck to be superstitious. Go on out and find Apple Annie. All right, dude. I was on my way. Well, I'm a first-class monkey if I can see how you can win pots by buying apples from old Dane. Can't find your apple, dude. Here's something for good luck. Uh, cut it up, cut it up. Uh, he wants apples, not lemons. Happy. In case you break anything, be sure it's your neck. Hello, Annie. Hello, Joe. I didn't keep you waiting, did I? Uh, you got a great racket, Annie. Get a couple of more suckers like the dudes, you can retire in a year. Oh, pull up your chin, happy you're liable to step on it. Yeah, never mind the chin. God bless you. So how'd you do last week? Okay. Hey, where were you Saturday? I couldn't win a race. Saturday? Sa oh, oh, I wasn't feeling so good Saturday. Drinking again, huh? Who? Me? Why, dude, I ain't touched a drop in weeks. Well, cut it up. 
Doc Michelle says your kidneys are all shot. Dr. Michelle's an old fool. He don't know what he's talking about. Well, of course, if you two are going to discuss Annie's kidneys... I'll well, read Mr. Dude. Oh, right. oh, dude, I can't find her no place. Oh, there you are. Say, the dude wants to see you. Nice work, Shakespeare. So long, Annie. I bet the card treats you right tonight, dude. They will. I'll tell him the dude bought an apple from Annie. <laughs> I always get it. The classiest station in the house. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. That bunch is going to cost you 50 cents. 50 cents? Why, you never charge me more than two bits. It's conditions, Annie. People don't leave things in their rooms anymore. Do you know it's got so bad I've got to go and buy my own toothpaste? Why, that's awful, Oscar. Even my wife's complaining. Do you know I remember the time when she used to be the best-smelling woman on the block? I used to bring her home so much perfume, she used to stink with it. Well, cheer up. Things is going to be better. Oh, I guess so. When are you expecting your next letter? Well, there's a mail boat in from Spain tomorrow morning. OK. I'll watch out. There's a good soul, and I'll pay you at the end of the week. Yeah, and don't you forget it. Because if I'm caught stealing letters for you, I'll get fired. No. No, you mustn't get fired. Well, if they catch me. Say, who are you getting these letters from anyhow? None of your business. <laughs> Heavy lover, eh? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Heavy lover. <laughs> the old devil, you. <laughs> Did you find any other place to sleep on but my picture? shouldn't keep me waiting like this when you know I'm expecting a letter. Why, Oscar, where's your uniform? Oscar! Oscar, what's happened? You... You haven't lost your job. Oh, Oscar, you... You shouldn't fool me like this. They can't fire you. Oh, well, they can't, eh? Well, they did. They caught me putting your letter in my pocket. Uh, where is it? Where's my letter? What am I going to tell the wife? That's what I want to know. Where's my letter? How do I know? They took it away from me. 
Huh? Annie, where are you going? They won't let you in that way. Hey, Annie! Well, you must be in the wrong place, madam. Peddler's not allowed in here, madam. Well, there's a strict rule of people like oh, you. Oh, let me go, let me go. I, I beg your pardon. Oh, my goodness. There's some mail here for me. A letter. Mail? Are you stopping here, madam? Oh, no. But there's a letter. It came in this morning for me. It's from Barcelona, Spain. It's, it's very important. Well, uh, what is your name, please? Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. Mrs. E. Worthington Manville? Yes, sir. Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. I'm the manager. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, if you please. There's a letter here for me, and I'd like to get it. Letter? Addressed to the hotel? Yes. You see, oh, I told that other man all about it. You're not a guest of the hotel, are Why, you? of course not. Anybody can see that. Please. There's no necessity for shouting. Well, then why don't you give me my letter? What's the use of standing there asking me a lot of foolish questions? My dear lady, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave the hotel. I won't go. I won't go till I get my letter. I'll be compelled to call the police. Well, call the police. Call anybody you like. I'm not a criminal. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, oh Mr. Please. I don't want to make any trouble for the hotel. All I want is my letter. It's from my daughter. See? It came all the way from Spain. Just a moment. Lloyd. Yes, sir? You remember a letter addressed to Mrs. Uh... E. E. Worthington Manville. Why, yes, it came in this morning. There, you see? I told you it was here. Let her have it. Oh, God bless you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Well, what are you standing there for? Go bring it. I sent it back. You sent it back? You see, sir, there's no one registered under that name, so naturally I sent it back marked party not known here. But you can't send it back. She'll find out that I'm not living Shh. at the hotel, don't you see? Please, please, please. Has the mail left yet? Yes, the boy took it out a few minutes ago. It's probably... There he is now. Oh, hey, boy, boy! Please. Oh, oh, don't put any more Please. of it in there. Don't Please. put any more of it. Oh, look what you... you can't do this here. I'm sure it's my... Like... She's quite Please, crazy. Madam. Oh, there it is. Oh, I knew it was there. Then I'd know it any place. Leave this hotel at once. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Grandma? All right. Where's my letter? Where's my letter? 
that I'm dead. That ought to be easy enough. Oh, that isn't going to do the hotel any harm. Mrs. E. Worthington Manville passed away last week. That's simple enough. Oh, yes. And say there was a, a funeral, a big funeral, and, and lots of flowers. And all the prominent people came. And if they should ask about Mr. Manville, uh, just say that he was so broken up that, that he had to take a trip around the world for a year. No, make it two years. That'll do the trick. Uh, pretty slick, isn't it? It's Apple Annie. <laughs> Come on, Annie. Oh, will you do it for me? I won't bother you anymore. Take her out of here. Honestly, Come on, Annie. I won't. You might have to you run in. To, you got to. You got to. Come on, never mind. She can't find me. You got to. Come on, get out. You got to. You yeah, sure, we'll talk business, but the proposition's got to be right. No, no, we want the whole stable, every horse in it. Look, three sixes. Listen, Babcock, without sun count or bow jest, we wouldn't give you counterfeit script for the whole outfit. Okay, now, how much you want? What? You take a hundred grand, it's a steal. A hundred thousand? What do you boys expect us to do, go out and rob the mint? Okay, if I can line up the dude, we'll step around to see you. It's a pushover, dude. Babcock must need the money. Take it from me, you're a lucky guy. Which one of these vests do you like? The white one or the striped one? Well, come on, come on, let's get going. We can knock this deal over in an hour. Can't find her, boss. Can't find her no place. Can't find who? Apple Annie, I look high and low for her. She ain't no ways around. Oh, so that's why you were stolen. What do you mean you couldn't find her? I get a lot of help from you guys. I feed you pretty good, don't I? You got dough in your pockets, ain't you? Well, listen, I know what I'm doing, and I don't go into this deal till I get an apple from Annie. Listen, Stoop, all you had to do was ask any panhandler on Broadway. That's just it. There ain't no panhandlers on Broadway. What? what? Listen, I hope my mother croaks that this ain't the truth. I walked all over town for hours. There ain't a beggar on the streets. No, I suppose they're all in Europe on a vacation. Well, search me. The thing's got me scared. Broadway looks like a morgue. Glad to see you, sir. His name is Shorty. Shorty? Yes. Blind man? Yes. Bring him in. None of them around, eh? You better get that dizzy dame off your mind. Well, I don't think about her in the daytime. Hello, sir. Hello, dude. Well, what do you mugs want? What about Annie? Yeah, what about Annie? I've been looking all over town for her. She's in an offer, Jan. Oh, been drinking again, huh? No, it ain't that. The mallet had found her walking around the waterfront. Yeah, front. she was in a daze. I think she was thinking she about... She was her walking head. down the waterfront talking to herself. Good thing mallet had ran into her. Uh, what is all this? She's in a <clears throat> awful jam, dude. Yeah, I heard that. Well, now, let me tell you. Wait, I'd like to... You see, dude, for years she's been swiping station from the mob. Lady. And writing her daughter she's in high society. Daughter? Yes, she's got a little daughter over in Europe. Been in the convent ever since she was a baby. She sends her money every month. And now she's going to marry a count or something. Ah, uh, what is all this, a racket? Where's she live? Anybody know where she lives? First Avenue, 314. Remember that Shakespeare? I'm going over to see her. Okay, you mugs, get out of here. Come on, everybody. You heard what the dude said. Have you go over to Bab Carson? Tell him till I get there. Mark Shakespeare, you come along with me. As soon as I get my apple, I'll meet you over there. I live and breathe if it isn't my old friend, the dude. Come in, gentlemen. Mm, I thought so. On a bat again. Where are your apples? Come in. I, I, the butler will take your things. <laughs> Didn't know I had a butler, did you, dude? <laughs> I got lots of butlers. Millions of them. Where you been, you old buzzard? I've been looking for you all day. So good of you to come down for the hunting season. Everyone always comes down for the, for the hunting season. Dude, let's get out of here. Every time she gets cracked, she starts pulling that society stuff. 
Gives me the creeps. What are you trying to do, kill yourself? You know what Doc Michelle said. This stuff will poison you. Hey, dude, get a load of this. This must be the daughter them panhandlers was yapping about. Yeah, you haven't met my daughter, have you? She's coming over here to visit me. Isn't she lovely? She's, she's coming over here with, with the Count. She's going to marry the Count's son. That's the kind of people I associate with. Funny, isn't it? They do, she thinks I'm in high society. Wait till she gets a look at me. It's going to be funny when she finds out her mother is Apple Annie. <laughs> Why don't you laugh, huh? Why don't you laugh? It's funny, I tell you. Apple Annie from Schubert Alley. <laughs> Apple Annie from Schubert Alley. <laughs> Fool getting herself in a jam like that. Remind me to send Doc Michelle down here right away. What are you gonna do, Mr. Dude? Do? About what? What are you gonna do about Annie? What do you mugs want me to do? We don't know. We thought you might figure something out. Uh, we had a meeting and somebody said, ask the dude. Oh, yeah? That's all I gotta do, I suppose. Go on, beat it. We figured if Annie could get an apartment at the Marbury for a week... We'd all pitch in with some of it, dude. Yes, we'd all help. Annie at the Marbury? Yeah. yeah. Go on, get out of here. Come on, scram, everybody. Scram now. Nervous, those guys. Annie at the mob, right? <laughs> hey, dude, do you mind if I have an idea? Yeah. Well, now, this here society friend of yours, uh, Rodney Kent, he's got an apartment at the Marbury. He has, sir. Huh? Well, what about it? What about it? Can you picture me going to Rodney Kent and saying, lend me your apartment for Rapalani? He'd throw me out on my ear. <laughs> That's just what I was going to say. He'd throw you out on your ear. Shut up about it, then. I was just going to do that. Where have I seen you before? Whom do you wish to see, sir? Is this Rodney Kent's apartment? Uh, yes, sir, but he's away. Uh, uh, what gave you the idea I'd give a hang where he is? Well, I, I assume... Don't that... go around assuming so much. It'll get you into trouble. Uh, yes, sir. Come here a minute. I want to tell you something that'll probably upset the rest of your day. I don't care anything about Rodney Kent. Uh, no, sir. Now toddle in there like a nice little feller and tell Dave the dude I want to see him. He's here, isn't he? Uh, yes, sir. Who shall I say is calling? Happy McGuire, the apple of his eye. That's who? Got that straight? Uh, yes, sir. I have it. Don't let it upset you. Four out of five, have it. I promise not to be depressed, sir. And remember, if you take one drop of gin... All right. Now, here's the layout. Here's your bedroom here, see? That's over in that corner. The Count is here, son is here, and your daughter here. Now, you got that straight? Yeah, you better keep this. Fine mess you got everybody into. Everybody worrying about you. Why didn't you swipe some stationery out of the White House? Then you could have said you was the wife of the President. Mr. Happy McGuire, the boy with the sore feet. You happen to know that I've been looking for you for two days? What's this? Meet the new society lady. <laughs> Hotel Marbury. Daughter. Where'd you ever get a daughter, anyway? Who's her father, huh? Who's her father? I suppose you're going to tell me who was once a big shot or something. Rodney can't give you this apartment for her? Yeah. He must be as big a sucker as I am. He must be off. He's not... 
The whole thing sounds insane, but go ahead, use the apartment. My only request is make certain no one puts mustaches on the paintings. Say, listen. Come here, come over here, I want to talk to you. Now get this. I got the Babcock deal all set, get me? It's set. Now that's our bread and butter. What's this? You're not doing yourself any good here. Yeah, I know, I know. You think I'm screwy. But I got an idea. For years, Annie's been lucky to me, ain't she? Right. Well, what kind of luck would I have if I passed her up at a time like this? Miss Missouri Martin. Fetch her in. Missouri Martin? Yeah, what Missouri that? Martin, the old gal herself. How's it, boys? Come on, gang. Well, how's my baby? Well, cut it out, cut it out. Well, here they are, sucker. The gang that keeps me broke but beautiful. Well, there they are, all ready for the slaughter. Now, where's the victim? Ah, there she is. And what material for a bunch of hungry artists? Look at them, look at them, their tongues are hanging out. Say, when they get through with her, she's gonna look every bit as good as me. The idea is to make her look like a lady. <laughs> Laughing boys in again. All right, come on, you flesh pounders, this is gonna be a sweet job. All, All right, right, Annie, let's go. We will make you beautiful. Come, <laughs> come on. Attagal. Take a right in there. The hair's going to be beautiful. It's all right, Annie. Yeah. <laughs> You won't get the first base. You'll have to lead her around on a string. Let's take him in that bedroom there. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He can't go in there. It's all right, dude. It's all right. Oh. Pierre. All right, girls, that's all. Folks, meet Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. I'll never forget you for this, dude. God bless you. Okay, okay. Yeah, you look fine. Fool anybody. Nice work, Missouri. Come on, happy, let's get going. Hey, wait a minute, you guys. And where do you think you're going? We're returning to the business of making a living, if it's just the same to you. So you think you're through, huh? What about that husband she's supposed to have? Husband? The Honorable E. Worthington Manville. Who's going to dig him up? Uh, gee, I forgot all about the husband. Listen, Missouri, go back in there and tell her to take care of that herself. That's a brilliant idea. And who's she going to get? One of her panhandler friends? He got her this apartment and a flock of clothes, didn't he? What more do you want? You can take care of that. Oh, I can, can I? That's very sweet of you. Whose idea was this, anyway? I'm only a kibitzer in this thing. Now you want to turn the whole business over to me. Well, you got another guest coming. I like Annie just as well as anybody. If you guys are going to walk out and leave her flat, I'm going to. I'm a sucker if I'm going to be left holding the bag. Do you want the dude to give up his business? Well, I got a nightclub needs looking after. You mean that comical hole in the wall? Don't make me laugh. If I could make you laugh, I'd go out and get drunk. You couldn't make a hyena laugh. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean talking to her like that? Stop arguing and let's do something. If we got to dig up a husband for Annie, let's do it and get it over with. Yeah, now you got to dig up a husband for her. Where are you going to get a husband just like that? What about you, Happy? Me? Oh, that's a swell idea. <laughs> I think you'd be just precious. That's a wonderful idea. There's just one thing stands in the way. I've got a wife that's very fussy. She don't like for me to go around marrying people. I know how unreasonable that must sound to you, but she's very funny that way. <laughs> I got it. I got just the one. Judge Henry G. Blake. Who's he? For a proposition like this, we gotta have a guy that talks classy, don't we? Well, Judge Blake is the classiest talker in town. Shakespeare. Yes, boss. Judge Blake, 
The guy that told you you could shoot pool was taking you for a sleigh ride. Granted, my boy, granted. Why, in Providence, where I come from, a cripple like you'd be taken for all he's got. That's one of the reasons I never go to Providence. Yeah, if you did, you'd come back without your pants. <laughs> How much longer must I toy with this benighted son of Providence? Take it easy, Judge. This guy's a cinch. Any minute now, you'll want to jack up the ante. I'm becoming annoyed at his silly twaddle. If that sap knew what a champ of Judge was, he'd sure go back to Providence, wouldn't he? Maybe if the stakes were a little higher, you might do better, eh, Judge? Success at last. Do better? I doubt it, my friend. Uh, thought you might want to double a bet. How about 10 cents a ball? 10 cents? A veritable fortune. Uh, afraid, huh? Afraid? Nobody ever said that to me and got away with it. Why, do you know that during the reign of King Charles II, we were known as the Fearless Blakes? I'll show you how afraid I am. I'll make it 50 cents a ball. Okay, come on. Boy. Set him up here. Drag him up. Yes, hurry up. Come on. That's the way. Hey, yes, sir. Come on, set him up. Let's get going. Come on, everybody. Make it four. Hey, Jack. For my old friend, the Bard of Avon. Dude wants to see you right away. Can't be done, my friend. At the moment, I'm engaged in a very profitable enterprise. I don't know enough about that, Judge. As a matter of fact, my next month's room rent depends upon it. Come on, Judge. It's your shot. Excuse me. My benefactor is calling. Wait a minute. The dude said not to take no for an answer. You know what that means. Yes, I've had occasion to know what that means. What's the matter, Judge? Getting cold feet? There he is again, the lucky stiff. I shall probably lose him for life. Excuse me. Well, step on it, Judge, will you? Now, step on it. Come on, Judge, you're holding up the game. Thought you were known as the Fearless Flakes. You were born under a lucky star, my friend. Ah! A six ball shot, friends. One in each pocket. Shooting left handed. What? What's this one? Shot. Can I put the left hand? Thank you, my lad. Proceed, Shakespeare. Now, it's only for a week, Judge. All you're gonna do is be a husband. A rich and aristocratic husband. The rich and aristocratic suits me admirably. Never try being a husband? I'm notorious for it. How'd you make out? Pitifully, pitifully. They were charming women, too. All four of them. <sighs> I'm sorry you brought that up, Duke. I can't understand why I should prove such a miserable failure. You probably talked him to death. In your own vernacular, my dear friend. Nerds to you. Come on, cut it out. What do you say? I'm interested. Whose husband? Well, never mind that. Now. Now, here's the layout. And so you're going to be the ever-loving husband of Apple Annie. Preposterous. Most preposterous. I have all people, Apple Annie. Now listen, dude, this is asking too much, much too much. A mere apple vendor, practically a mendicant. Good afternoon. Oh, here she is now. Here, who is? Apple Annie. The judge just said how glad he was to be your ever-loving husband. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm deeply flattered. The pleasure, I assure you, my dear and charming lady, is all mine. Nineteen and a half. Nineteen and a half. Well, you see, Happy, an apartment, a few clothes, and Judge Blake, and the thing was cinched. Just between you and me, I got quite a bang out of it. Well, now that that's over, maybe we can revive the Babcock deal. What do you mean, revive it? Don't tell me you let it get away from you. I let it get away. So you laid down on the job, huh? Well, I should have known that. Say, listen. Babcock wore out the seats of two pair of pants just sitting around on his El Fideldo. All right, all right. Call him up. Tell him I'm ready. I'll come right over. I let it get away. Hello, dude. I'm glad I found you in. Yeah, what do you want? 
I wanted to see you before the boat got in. Annie's daughter arrives today, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, Matt, scram. I'll see you tomorrow. I shouldn't hurry so. It plays havoc with my dignity. All right, we'll be right on. Well, what's on your mind, Jed? Come on, come on, I got business. Dude, I'm afraid you've played an abominable trick upon that poor old woman. I what? My dear dude, do you realize the number of reporters that meet the incoming boats? Well, they'll want to know all about the Count, why he came to America, who his friends are. That means me and Apple Annie. Sure. There's a guy named Winchell who'd give his right eye for a story like this. I told you you couldn't get away with it. Now, why didn't you think of that before? Why didn't I think of it? Yeah, yeah. What are you telling me now for? What are we going to do? What are you going to do? You started it. It's your party. Well, I'm leaving it to you. You better see that those reporters stay away. What time's that boat come in? I hope it sinks. In about an hour. Well, I think I better go with you to see that nothing goes wrong. Come on, Judge. Coming? Goodbye, sad eyes. Here. Yeah, Dave, the dude ain't down here for his help. There's no mob with him. Tell these mugs to hold that circle and don't let anybody get near us. Don't worry, the only way they can get in is with a tank. Stick around and see what happens. Not a bad idea. How do I look? Okay, okay. How's Annie look? You wouldn't know her, Schultz. I remember Annie when she looked like that all the time. Peg Lake took me over close to her and she smelled beautiful. I can hardly believe it. Just think in a little while I'll be holding my baby in my arms. a battleship. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, this is your stepfather, dear. Oh, Mother's written so much about... Oh, she... oh, 
Oh, may I please have Count Alfonso Romero and his son Carlos? How do you do? This is indeed a great pleasure, my dear Count. We've been looking forward to this visit for some time. Hey. Oh, 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 how stupid of me. This is, uh, this is your Uncle David. Uncle? Well, I didn't know I had an uncle. Yeah. Oh, then, no. he's father's brother. Oh, I'm so pleased. Oh. My, well, Mother, you didn't write a word about me. Oh, that's because <laughs> Brother David is the black sheep of the family, so to speak. Oh, uh, I want you to meet Count Romero and his son, Carlos. Uh, this All is right. my uncle, David Mando. How do you do? Where do you think you're going? Are you talking to me? Well, I ain't talking to your Aunt Tilly. Well, I'm a ship news reporter. I want to have a chat with the Count. You're all wrong. He ain't no Count. No? Oh, somebody give you a bunch of steer. Sure. Shows you what a rumor will do. Now, what you want to do is to go over to Pier 48. There's a boat coming in there from the Argentine. Maybe there's a king and queen on it. You can't tell. Take this gentleman over to Pier 48. It's in the Bronx. The 48's down by the battery. It's in the Bronx, I said. I wonder what the racket is. Looks like a couple of foreigners being taken over. Stop and have a talk with the dude. Hey, Happy. A couple of cops are going to see the dude. Holy smoke, we got a stump. Go start a fight. Sock the weasel. Sock the weasel? Why, he's my brother. I said sock him. Hey, weasel, I hate to do this. Your car is waiting, sir. Oh, thank you, my good man. Thank you. Sam Spray, a couple of holes, babe. Oh, I think we'd all better be going. Uh, the cars are waiting. I think you'll enjoy the ride to the city town. It's beautiful city. Know where the family went? They went for a ride, sir. Where'd they go yesterday? Went riding, I think, sir. The day before? Uh, the same thing, sir. That's fine. Here. That's for your expenses. And that's for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Remember your general orders? Uh, yes, sir. If I'm asked any questions, I know nothing. As a matter of fact, sir, I'm completely dumb. Fine. You think you can do it? That should be a cinch. I beg your pardon, sir. I said that should be a lead pipe cinch. If I had choice of weapons with you, sir, I'd choose grammar. Mm. And remember, don't flop on this fella. No, sir. If you do, your family better send for the body. I have no family, sir. Oh. Well, you won't have no body, neither. No body. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't want to be here when the family gets back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uncle David! Hello. There you are. Gee, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Mr. Manville. How are you? Where have you been? We missed you terribly. <laughs> well, that's something. Don't be so strange. Everybody's crazy about you. Carlos and I are going to name our children after you. <laughs> if we're talking about children, it might be a good idea to get married, don't you think? <laughs> When's it take place? I don't know. Everybody's making such a fuss about it. Mother wants the wedding here with just the family. And the Count wants it in Spain with the whole world attending. So involved. We don't care where it happens, as long as it happens. That's the way to talk, young fella. Hello, Brother David. Edward. Hello, Mr. McGuire. Why, Judge. You've all met uh, David's secretary? Huh? Uh, yeah, my secretary, everybody. I'm uh, so glad you came, Mr. McGuire. I thought you might want to invite him to our reception. Sure, sure. That's a good idea. Come on, happy little guest. Come on. Reception? What do you mean, reception? Oh, we're having a reception for the folks the day after tomorrow. The night their boat returns to Spain. Well, now, isn't that just dandy? You're surprised, aren't you, Brother David? <laughs> yeah. I thought you would be, knowing me. I have never known a man to detest reception so violently as the judge. 
Who, uh, who's coming, brother, and what? Oh, just a few of our friends. It's to be a small affair, a hundred, a hundred and fifty people, perhaps. Yeah, hardly a handful. The Count is getting tired of just looking at buildings, aren't you, Count? <clears throat> he wants to meet some of our friends. The Count would just love our friends. Of course, I should look to you, Brother David, to help me as much as you can. Of course, of course. I'd like to have a little talk with you before you do anything about it. There's one or two things I want to straighten you out on. By all means, Brother David. Yes, John? Uh, there's a newspaper man to see you, sir. What does he want, John? Perhaps he heard about Count Romero being here and wants to write about it. Oh, oh perhaps you'd better see him on your way out, Brother David. You are so clever at handling newspaper men. Yeah, I'll handle them. Well, what can we do for you? Oh, society reporter, the star. I want to get a story on Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. I've looked all through the social register and I can't even find mention of her. Can you imagine that? He couldn't find it in the social register. Well, I can't understand it. What did you want to know? Oh, just a sort of a general biography. Say, so, wait a minute. Aren't you Dave the Dude? Who? Dave the Dude? What is this man talking about, Albert? The house is full of guests. Let's go where we won't be disturbed. All right, just as you say, but I could swear that you're Dave the Dude. Oh, 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 oh. There's a room just here that's not often used. Sure we won't be disturbed there, Albert? No, not a chance, Uncle. This room is where they keep the family heirloom. Some of them go back, I'm told. Wait. You'll always love me, won't you, Carlos? You know I will. Did your father say anything yet? No. What do we do if he doesn't give his consent? What if he doesn't like Mother and Dad? What do we do, Carlos? Don't be worried, darling. He's very fond of him, really he is. Just that he likes to be formal about things like this. Oh, I'll just die if anything happens. I'll just die, Carlos. Mother. I was in my room, and I was so lonesome. You don't mind if I pay you a little visit, do you? Oh, of course not, Mother. It's my fault. I've taken so much of Louise's time. I feel I've been terribly selfish. No, you haven't. You've been sweet. I'll go in and talk to Dad, if you'll excuse me. Good night, Mother. You don't mind my calling you Mother, do you? I just love it, son. Thank you. Night, Louise. Good night, Carlos. He's a lovely boy. Mother, I'm so happy. No, my baby. Mother. Yes, my sweet? You don't think anything can happen, do you? Oh, I guess I've just been foolish. Maybe it's because I've been wishing so hard. Mother, did you ever wish for anything so hard that... that... Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Reception. Uh, you must have stayed awake nights thinking that one up. You found yourself in a swell apartment and you began to believe it. Well, for my dough, you're still just a penny any fool's heart. Well, now, after all, my dear, do. Ah, uh, shut up. Now, uh, don't get cross, Brother David. Don't Brother David me. Listen, you. Hello. Now, what do you want? I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Dude, but the Count has just asked me to get the Spanish consul on the phone. What's he calling him over? What's he want? Well, what do you know about that? The old boy's calling up the Spanish consul. Maybe he's checking up on us. How's your Spanish, Happy? Good as my French. They both smell. 
You, what about you? Well, now I'll tell you, dude. When I was in Havana... Yeah, I... never mind that. Hello. Spanish consul on the food. Oh, gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you uh, close the door, please? Consulado Espanol? Quiero hablar con el consul. Consul not home. That me, Japanese boy. No, sir. No, sir. Consul not home. He gone away a long time. Maybe he come back next week. No, me, Japanese boy. That consul not home. Thank you. Very good. Very, very good. Japanese boy. Very difficult to understand. I think he said consul is out of town. I'm glad. I think it was very unsportsmanlike. Carlos! I'm sorry, Father, but that's the way I feel about it. It would be terrible if these well, people... Well, it can't be helped, son. After all, we know nothing about these people. I may be wrong, but somehow their behavior seems strange. I cannot quite put my finger on what it. What difference does that make? I love Louise. Now, Carlos, you must let me handle this. If they're all right, there's nothing to worry about. You can be married soon as we return home. In the meantime, there is no reason why we cannot wait until the reception is over before we decide. I want to meet some of their friends. Well, what about it? What about that reception? The reception, my dear dude, if I may be allowed one small word, is inevitable. I don't know what stops me from putting a slug on you. Personally, I shouldn't mind that at all. Oh, I'm rather bored with the whole rotten business of living anyway. He was a wise old sage who said that every man over 40 should be exterminated. Yeah, who said that? I don't know, but someone should have said it. What good is a man over 40 anyway? Now take yourself, for instance. Yeah, I'm only 34. Only 34? I could have sworn that you were at least 50. What? Look at yourself. Positively jowly. No, no, you're kidding me. No, incidentally, sir. I have a very good exercise for that. It's something like this, a head movement. You do it 24 times every morning. Like this, huh? No, 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 no. More, more of the up and down movement. Oh, like this, huh? Yes, that's much better. Pardon me for horning into your calisthenics. But you were going to put the slug on them a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, that's right. How about it? Well, what do you want me to do? Say my prayers? No, oh, I mean about the reception. Yeah, it's all going to be so simple. Rodney Kent's apartment, a few clothes, and it's a pipe. What a shock you're going to get when you wake up in the Bastille. What for? Oh, a simple little matter of abduction. It's again the law, so I've been told. You mean that society reporter? No, I mean those three society reporters. Three of them? Sure, a couple of more of them got horning around. We had to put them in the bag. Don't you ever read the newspapers? Take a peek at the headlines. See if your Japanese dialect will get you out of this one. Ah, uh, forget it. They're still in Rodney Kent's storeroom, ain't they? Yeah. Bugs Malone's still with them, ain't he? Yeah. Well, forget it. I'll, I'll square that later. What I'm most interested in is that reception. Now look, Judge. You go to Annie and tell her it's all off. What? Sure. I guess I'm a sentimental old fool. But please don't ask me to deliberately break that poor old woman's heart. Well, stop it. You're breaking mine. Where are you going to get the people? If you give a reception, you've got to have a lot of high-class people, don't you? That, my dear dude, is very simple. Yeah. It may surprise you to know that in my own senile way, I found the solution. Now, look. In reality, I'm Judge Henry G. Blake, exponent of pool. Penny Annie pool, if you wish. Yeah, yeah, go on. But to Count Romero, I am the Honorable E. Worthington Manville, a celebrated statesman. Yeah. Now, is there any reason why Louis the Lug couldn't be the ambassador to Turkey? What? And the weasel. Wouldn't he make an excellent Secretary of War? The weasel. And if Missouri Martin were introduced to me as a New York society leader, I shouldn't be inclined to doubt it. Yeah, well, I would. And those girls in her nightclub. There you have two dozen of the finest debutantes in town. You're off your nut. The minute they opened their kissers, the roof would fall on them. Ah, that's the trick. They won't open their kissers. 
Except for possibly a few introductory speeches, which I shall dash off for them. Judge, I think you've got it. Sure. Sure, why not? I'll tell that gang of mugs the first one that opens his yap will get, uh, get slugged. Uh, where's, my, where's my address book? Well, I give up. When Louis the Lug becomes the ambassador to Turkey, I don't want to be around anymore. Not me. I'm going over to the insane asylum and hobnob with a few sensible people. Hey, Judge, give me a hand. You get on this phone. See if there's anybody over at, uh, at Boyle's. You ought to know that number. That's well idea, Judge. Well, we'll marry Apollani's daughter off or bust a gut. Hello, my good man. Would you kindly connect me with Harry the horse? Hello, Butch. Yeah? Send him right in. Yes, sir. Well? Nothing doing, Inspector. That's what you told me yesterday and the day before and the day before that, too. We've got to find those three reporters and we've got to find them quick. Look what the newspapers are doing to us. I've done everything, Inspector. I've covered every angle. Excuses, nothing but excuses. That's all I've been getting. Now, you better dig those... Yeah? Commissioner on the phone. Who? The Commissioner. There he is again. Fourth time today. Hello, Commissioner. No, I've got Captain Moore in my office right now. Not a thing yet. What do you mean, not a thing? That's all I've been getting for the last few days. What do you got down there, a bunch of schoolboys? Now, listen, McCreary. I'm not going to be made to go for the department. You find those reporters or I'll... Hello. Uh, mayor's on the phone, sir. The mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, didn't you tell him I was out? Uh, no, I didn't. All right, put him on. Yes, sir. Hold on a minute. The mayor's on the phone again. Hello. Yeah, hello, Chief. No, I was just talking to Inspector McCreary. Not a thing yet. Well, what are you going to do about it, Commissioner? Just sit around and wait for those reporters to walk into your office? Yes, 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 yes. I've heard all that before. Now, I'm only interested in one thing. I want some action, and I want it quick. Why, every editor in town's in my office this minute. Yes, and you're going to get a front-page editorial from me every day until something's done. Why, our reporters can't even go out and get news without a bodyguard. Now, I want this clear, Commissioner. I refuse to stand the brunt for the incompetence of the police department. The city administration can't do anything. Perhaps the state can. When the governor gets in town this afternoon, we'll take it up with him. Now, you find those three reporters, Commissioner, or you'll force me to demand your resignation. Now, that's final. Hello, McCleary. Now, get this straight. You dig up those three reporters or I'll have to get me another boy, and that's that. Captain, I'm going to give you 24 hours to find those reporters. If you can't do it, you better start looking for another job, and that's the works. Yes, sir. What is it, Murphy? Here's a young fellow with an angle on the reporter business. Come on, son, speak up. Well, a funny thing happened. I was down to meet one of the boats, and I was just going over to talk to a count or something when a couple of yeggs grabbed me and shoved me into a car. Yeah, what happened? They took me up in the Bronx someplace. How'd you get away? We stopped for a minute in traffic, and I jumped out. Who were the men? I don't know. Maybe I can tell you something about that, Inspector. When did this happen, son? Uh, last Tuesday. That checks all right. Kelly and I were working the pier last week. Dave the Dude was down there meeting some people. Had his whole mob with him. We thought there was something funny to tell him. Dave the Dude, huh? Well, this is beginning to look like a police department. Sit down, son. I want to talk to you. Now, get this straight. I ain't having this rehearsal because I like it. That reception is tomorrow night. Now, if you don't rehearse now, you'll have to bollocks up the whole thing. Now, you got your title, you got your speeches, you got everything laid out. First, learn your speeches. The judge here went to a lot of trouble to rig up some swell ones for you, and I don't want you to blow them, see? All right, come on, let's get going. <laughs> No, 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 you're too stiff, you're too stiff. Relax, can't you relax? Hey, Butch, your legs are fucking. Can't you bend from the waist? Harry the Force. Look here, you don't want to look like you're going to kick her. No, oh, and smile. Go on, keep smiling. Sure, you're supposed to be having a good time. Hey, Louis the Lug, what do you think you are doing? You're supposed to be ambassador to Turkey, not a wrestler. Holy mackerel, this is awful. Hey, cheesecake! 
What's the matter? Is it too much for you? No. Uh, oh, I can do it all right, only... Only uh, what? Well, uh, I'm as good as Louis the Luggers any day. If he's ambassador, I ought to be king. Say, listen, Sab, a secretary of the interior is bigger than an ambassador. Uh, sure. You can't kid me. A secretary's a secretary. Okay, I'll make you president of the Board of Aldermen. How's that? President? Well, now, that's something oh. like it. Hey, Judge, we got a new president of the Board of Aldermen. Check. Come here. You two, Max. Now, let's hear you do your stuff. Hey, quiet! The rest of you guys, quiet! Now, listen. Mix here's as it counts, see? Now I want to hear your speech. <coughs> uh, uh, did I get a knockdown to this guy? Yeah, you've been introduced to him. Oh, I get you. I get you. Uh, um, a count? Uh, I, um, uh, that is, um, it's a rare, uh, uh, it's a rare privy, uh, privy, uh, what it's, are you uh, talking about? What are you talking it's, about? It's a rare privilege, you dope. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee, dude, I can't make the grave with words like this. Now look at the judge. Hey, get away from me! Get away from me! You're driving me nuts! Well, what's the matter with you all? Quit! Come on, let's get going. Rehearse, rehearse! I am charmed to meet you, Count. You stink. Call it heads. Hey, that makes me king as I am. A couple of more wins and you'll be charged the whole world. Oh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Quiet. Quiet, silence, everybody. It looks like we're going to have to take up one thing at a time. Now forget the speeches right now and we'll just take up the bowing. Judge, come on down and show him how to bow again. Now watch this close. Now, you see, his knees don't buckle. Look where that hand is. Isn't that graceful? Look at that smile. Now you see there ain't anything tough about that. Come on, everybody do it. Everybody bow. No speeches. Just bow. All right, everybody, bow now. I don't believe it. Hey, you, where do you think you're going? Come here. Time you showed up. I beg you. They got me doing it now. Don't worry, you can stand plenty of practice. Strand. Hey, cut the clowning. Say, these guys got me crazy. You're not doing them any good. Hey, listen, I'm going through with it, see? Hey, stop it, stop it! Wait a minute, wait a minute, everybody, now! <laughs> the trouble with a lot of you guys is you don't take this thing serious. Well, let me tell you something. It's serious, all right. And the guy that don't think it is, better take it on a lamb right now. Oh, listen, fellas, I don't want to get tough with you, but we got to go through with it. It ain't for me. Nobody's going to get anything out of it. Happy here thinks I'm nuts. Well, maybe I am, I don't know. But I started it, and I got to go through with it. It's for Apple Annie, see? She's in a tough spot, and it's up to us to give her a break. Now, if anything goes wrong tomorrow night, there's no telling what she's liable to do. So come on, let's practice and practice hard. Now we'll take up the Apple Annie speech. All you girls are Apple Annie, see? All right, fellas, pick yourself a dame. You're just being introduced to us, see? All right, let's go. All right, everybody, let's get organized now. The Apple Annie speech. Put a little ginger into it. Come on. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Quiet, quiet! The Indians are upon us. Hello, dude. Hi. What's going on around here? Nothing you'd be interested in. Looks well, kind of funny, your whole mob up here at one time, though. Anything wrong in a guy having his friends up? Oh, no, nothing wrong in that. The mugs are getting kind of classy, aren't they? Okay, everybody, go on home. Rehearsal's over. But not a show, dude? Yeah, yeah. benefit performance. Yep. Good night, dude. So long. Duke and Fish is what gets me. Yeah, the whole mob is up there. 
You didn't ask about the three reporters, did you? That's good. Uh -huh. Senator O'Brien and Gibbons. Now listen. You two fellas watch the dude. But don't let him know he's being tailed. If anything looks phony to you, let me know right away. I want a tail put on every one of Dave the dude's mouth. You'll find a list of their names in the files. Use every man in your department if you have to. I want those eggs shadowed 24 hours a day starting right now, so get going. I'm sorry, darling. Yeah. Go to sleep. Good night. Mm -hmm. The music must be soft and mellow. Nothing harsh, nothing raucous. Our guests have very delicate nerves. You are to play at intervals of ten minutes. Do we understand each other? All right, let it up. Are these the two men? Yes. Do they know their requirements? I've explained everything, sir. Excellent job, excellent. Better put some on me, put some there. Oh, you know, you're quite sure now it looks all right. I wouldn't have anything go wrong for the wonderful. Uh, come in. Do these old eyes deceive me, or am I really in the presence of an angel? Oh, stop it, Judge. Never in all my questionable career have I gazed upon such divine loveliness. Oh, stop it, Judge. Honestly, how do I look? Exquisite. What time are they coming? Eight o'clock, my love. Do you think they can do it? Do it? They'll do it or else. Oh, Dude has been rehearsing them night and day until they're ready to drop. Oh, oh I'm so nervous. Oh, there, there, my little dewdrop. Don't you worry. If anything happens, I'll be there to cover up. Oh. You just leave it to the old judge. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> you're so good. I don't know. Dude and his whole mob are up in Missouri Martins, and there's a sign on the joint closed. No, I didn't find out what it's all about, but it sure looks phony. Well, there's a line of cars outside a block long. Don't let him get away from you now. And what's more, don't let the dude find out he's being watched. He's a pretty shrewd article. Okay, keep in touch with me. More there? Yes, sir. Put him on. More talking? More, you'd better get the riot squad ready. Take about 25 men. Machine guns, tear bombs, everything. The works. We may have a job on our hands. All right, sir. You know, sometimes, Count, I'm a little ashamed of my fellow Americans. The way they fawn at and worship celebrities. Oh, he's rather charming. They're like children. You'll notice it tonight. Now, in your presence, they'll probably stammer and become tongue-tied and awkward. I beg of you to make allowances for them. Oh, of course, of course. Different countries, different characteristics. Which reminds me, there is custom in my country which quite obviously is not American. I was waiting for you to mention it. What is it, Cal? The dowry, my dear judge. Nothing has been said about the dowry. The dowry? The dowry. Oh, the dowry. I am aware, of course, that in America is not considered very important. But in my country, an old Spanish custom, huh? Si, senor. A very old, old custom. I don't know what to say, Count. You kind of crept up on me with that one. What is that you say? Uh, I, I say I wasn't quite prepared for this. Uh, it's rather a delicate subject, you know. Perhaps you do not realize whom your son is marrying. A Manville, sir. A descendant of the celebrated general of the Revolutionary War, George Washington Manville. You no doubt have heard of him. I'm sorry, but I have not. Well, 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 that's strange. And on her mother's side, she comes from the purest stock. Why, do you know if it were not for them, there'd be no apple industry in America? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. But my son, too, comes of very old and distinguished family. Yet I am making settlement equal to $50,000. You are? Si, senor. I thought you perhaps would like to make similar settlement. Well, now, I, I don't know about that. Well, of course, if you do not wish to discuss it. Well, look at this, billiards. Why did you not tell me you had a billiard room? Do you play 
do I play, senor? In Valencia, I am champion. Well, now, isn't that just... You don't say. Perhaps before the guests arrive, we might... Uh... Nothing would give me greater pleasure, uh... Carl. Oh, senor. Senor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... About the dowry, Carl. Yes? It occurred to me that inasmuch as the children are going back to Spain to live with you, that I should take care of the whole amount. Oh, no, no. I could not let you do that. Oh, after all, it's only a hundred thousand dollars? Yes, that is true. But why should you bear the entire burden? Nothing, nothing at all, I assure you, my dear Count. I can well afford it. Oh, well, for that matter, so can I. You are so gracious, you make me ashamed. Nothing would give me greater pleasure than you allow me to take care of it. Oh, no, that would be most unfair. But, senor, I want to do... No, 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 no. Now, I'm on the daughter's side. I have that right. But, senor, I insist. Oh, this is silly. We might go on like this for hours. Now, in America, we have ways of settling things like this. We toss coins or pull straws or... <laughs> What amuses you, Count? I was just thinking, senor, I could take advantage of you. Yes, how? By suggesting billiards. Well, I don't see why not. Oh, no, 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 I could not do that. It would be most unfair. Oh, perhaps it won't be. You never can tell. You play well? Do I play well? Hmm. I practically make my living at it. <laughs> I warned you, senor. Now I want everybody on their toes. And no drinking, you understand? Now the whole thing won't last more than three or four hours. They've got to catch a boat at midnight. And everybody remember who you're supposed to be? Yeah. What have you got mapped out for me, Dave? You're the society leader in New York, Ms. O'Rourke. Now what are you trying to do, insult me? I'll tell you what, I'm one of the family, see? Where well, there's an uncle, there's got to be an auntie. Folks, I want you to meet the ever-loving wife of Uncle Dave the Dude Manville. Look out, dude. She's sneaking up on you again. Okay, Mazora, anything you want. Well, that's set. And remember, you palookas, you're supposed to be gentlemen, see? Come on, Happy. Gee, Dave, I want to tell you what a swell thing I think you're doing. And I love you for it. Wife, huh? Go on, get away from me. Oh, Smiley. Look out, dude. Cops. I'm trailing you all day. Cops, millions of them. Cops. I thought you said this thing was on the up and up. Now look here, dude. If there's anything screwy about it, you can tell me. Come on, Nick. Take it easy. We can't go over to the mob right now. They'll follow us over there. Well, what are we going to do? No, it's cold. We've got to call it off. Call off nothing. Shut up and let me figure it. <sighs> what luck. Amazing, isn't it? I've been most fortunate, haven't I? You realize if you make this point, you win? Really? Well, I'll have to make it then. I'm afraid that shot is practically impossible, Count. It can be made. Yes, you think so? You shave the white one very fine, go around the table, meet the red one down here. Uh -huh. That's too much for me, Count. Uh, it would take an expert to do that. Uh, pardon me, sir. Your brother would like to speak to you on the phone. Oh, Brother David? Yes, sir. He said it's most important. I shall be there directly. You made it! Oh, most fortunate, most fortunate. Hello. Yes, this is he. 
Oh, congratulate me, Brother David. I've just saved you $50,000. Never mind that stuff. Listen, we're in a jam. We're stymied here at Missouri Martins. The place is surrounded by cops. Cops? I don't like that at all, my dear dude. Would you suggest that I fold my tent and silently scram into the night? Don't you budge out of the place. You stay right where you are and stall till I figure something out. Just as you say, dude. But I hardly relish being left holding the well-known bag. What is it? What is it? What is it, Judge? Why, nothing. Oh, tell me. Nothing, nothing at all, my dear. Oh, I heard you. I heard you say something about the cops. They're not coming here, are they? No, 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 of course not. Oh, don't fool me. Don't fool me, Judge. Tell me the truth. Now, don't get yourself all worked up, Annie. You've got to keep your head. Yes, but I'm the one. I ought, I ought to know. Oh, oh, don't fool me. I'd, I'd rather go in there and tell them the whole truth myself. And cops, they're still out there. I see. Thank you. When are the guests supposed to arrive? I don't know, sir. Uh, could you tell me... Uh... No, sir. Oh, no. Oh, what are we going to do? What if the police should come here? What will I say to the Count? What will I say to Louise? Now, be quiet, Annie. Oh. The police aren't coming here. Hello, Louise. Poor dear Louise. She's such a sweet girl, lovely girl. Don't you think she's lovely, Judge? Why, of course, of course. Oh, suppose... Suppose the Count should call the wedding off. It'd kill Louise. It'd kill her. And she'd hate me. Now, don't be oh. silly, Annie. I know. What am I going to tell her? She, she'll want to know all about her father. What'll I say to her? What'll I tell her? I... I never was married, you know, Judge. Uh, there, dear, you won't have to tell her anything. <laughs> all these years, I've kept it from her. And now... Oh, she mustn't ever find out. Oh, no, please. Don't let her uh, Annie, her. Annie, be quiet. <laughs> don't be let quiet, her find dear, out. Be quiet, dear. Be quiet. Please, now, don't. Control yourself, Annie. Don't be let quiet. her find There, there, dear, there. Listen, Commissioner, you don't think I'd come down to see you if it wasn't on the level, do you? You've got to take my word for it. You've got to lay off me tonight. What else do you want? The key to the city? What's all your gang doing up at Missouri Martins? They're having a clam bake. No, it's nothing. Nothing you'd be interested in, but I can't tell you about it. If I could, you'd see how silly it is to make all this fuss. Just lay off me tonight. I'll do anything. I'll help you find those reporters. That's all you want, isn't it? For sure. Where you got them, you? I ain't got them. But all I got to do is send a word around. Those reporters will be back at their desk tomorrow. Good as new. Just call off your men till 12 o'clock tonight. That's all I'm asking. Sorry, you. Can't do business. I'm afraid you're going to have a police escort until those reporters show up. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll tell you something. You're right. I have got those reporters. But they're not going to show up, see? They're not going to show up till I get good and ready to produce them. Now, will you do business? Sure. Sure, we'll do business. Always glad to do business. Hey, Mac, so you got the reporters, huh? Well, that's what I thought all along. Fist these two guys who are going to book them. Wait a minute, this won't do you any good. Nah, nah. Yes, sir, you can always do business with the police department. <laughs> Captain the mayor on the phone. <laughs> I don't think you can get him, Commissioner. He's thrown that party for the governor tonight. I'll get him all right when he finds out it's about the reporters. I wouldn't be surprised if the mayor makes a deal with you, too. Probably settled for 50 years. Oh, don't be a sap, Commissioner. What do you want to drag the mayor into this for? You want those reporters, don't you? The newspapers are making a sucker out of you. Well, here's your chance to come out on top. What? Well, just tell him it's about the reporters. Yeah. Now listen, there ain't anything crooked about this whole thing. You'd laugh your head off if you heard the story. Why, sure, I'm laughing right now. 
Oh, well, hello, Chief. Hey, wait a minute before you talk to the mayor. I'll tell you the whole story. You'll probably think I'm nuts, but here's a real lowdown. Say, look, you believe in fairy tales, don't you? What? No, it's no use. I'll hang before I let you give me the horse laugh. Go ahead, talk to the mayor. Talk to anybody you want, but I'll tell you one thing. You'll never see those reporters again. Hello, Chief. Yeah, I got Dave the Jude right here. Yeah. Yeah. He admits having the free reporters. He does, huh? Call the governor. Who, oh, governor? Dave the Dude admits having the reporters. Excellent. Have they arrested him yet? Sure, sure, they've arrested him, Governor. But what do you think is going to happen now? In the morning, a bail bond is offered, and you never hear any more about it. That's ridiculous. That's the way things work out in this town, Governor. But he's got a colossal nerve. Who does he think he is? He can't make any deals with the police department. Now, there's an example for you. He wants to make a deal with us. Because if we don't let him alone tonight, we'll never see the reporters again. Well, that's outrageous. Don't get excited, Governor. It's quite the customary procedure. Bring Dave the Dude up here. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Bring him up here right away. Now, don't you worry about my guests. This is more important. Now, you gentlemen have been so free in your criticism of the administration. Let's see what you can do. I'll let you take him. And you can spread him all over the front pages. Fine. That's, That's just exactly what we want. I'd send a criminal like that away for life. Well, here's your chance, Governor. It was all going to be so simple. Ask them if they believe in fairy tales. Look at their skulls. It's a rare privilege. It's a rare... Stop! Stop! Cheesecake, I don't mind telling you, you smell the high heaven. Why don't you unlax like I told you? You're getting worse every time, you dope. Well, Shakespeare, I'm wore out. Now, how can a guy unlax if he's all wore out? Listen, Simon Legree, we've been doing this for hours. The dude said to keep on practicing, didn't he? Well, so long as he said to practice, we're going to practice, see? Now, everybody, up on your feet. Oh, Throw yourself into it, remember. I told you to unlax. Now, I want you to unlax, see? What if the dogs do bark? Come on, Lefty, get into it. Now, the Apollani speech. Keep on practicing. Don't stop. Hello, dude. Oh, but gee, dude, we're all set. We've been practicing. Everybody looks swell. Okay, dude. I'll tell him. What's the matter? Dude said it's all off. Oh, but it can't be. We're... Dude said it's all off. Everybody should send back the suits. What a break for Annie. So when you do try to do something decent, they won't let you. Poor Annie. Mother. Mother. Mother, is there anything wrong? I heard the Count say he didn't think there was going to be any reception. Isn't anybody coming? My baby. Louise, darling. Yes, dear. If anything should happen, you'd never hate your mother. Oh, would. Mommy. Don't say things like that, darling. Oh, please don't say things like that. Is the Count still in the drawing room? Yes. Annie, where are you going? Where are you going, Annie? I want to have a few moments talk with you. Of course, 
course you know there's nothing in the world I want more than for Louise to marry your son. He's a dear boy. Louise loves him. Loves him dearly. And I'm quite sure he loves her too. Ever since she was born, I've had but one thought in my mind, her happiness. When she wrote to me and told me that she had found someone she loved, I think I was the happiest mother in the world. Count Romero, you came over here to find out something about her about her family, about me. Oh, I don't blame you. You had a perfect right. You, you knew nothing about us. It would have been terrible if after they were married you had found out that her, that her mother was, was someone you would be ashamed of. Someone that even she would have been ashamed of. Oh, that's silly, Mother. That's silly, darling. That's why I wanted to have this little talk with you, Count Romero. I wanted to, to tell you all about us. I want to tell you... My dear Mrs. Manville, so good to see you again. The last time I had the pleasure of seeing you was at your very lovely party at Bragg. I shall never forget it. It was brilliant. And this, I presume, is your very charming daughter. Count Romero and his son, Carlos. How do you do? Welcome to our city. I recognize you at once, Mayor. I have seen you in the news Oh, I'm so delighted to be with you tonight, madame. How do you do, Mr. It's a miracle. Two miracles. The governor. His Excellency, the governor. What did you say, Evelyn? His name was? Mrs. E. Worthington Manfield. For goodness sake, don't forget it. I can't tell you what a pleasure, what a privilege it is for us to be here tonight at your wonderful reception. Your charming daughter, I presume. Taking us down to the boat. Not bad, huh? When I was a kid, they had a tough time making me believe in Santa Claus. Look, Father, 
escort, a police escort. That's more than they do for us in Valencia. You are very influential, my friend. All this? Nothing at all. Nothing, I assure you. An apple woman. Delightful experience. Made me feel ten years younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose, Governor, now that you're in town, you'll follow up that investigation over at the city hall. Oh, no, no. I begin to feel that we've been a little bit harsh with them. I guess I've been a little impatient with the administration, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry about my attitude tonight. Oh, that's all right. I must remember to call up the commissioner tomorrow. Yeah. I've been making his life miserable lately. <laughs> you boys have got to excuse me if I get a little tough with you once in a while. I know you're doing your best. Okay, Commissioner, okay. <laughs> That's the way you're going to write the story. Got that clear? Yeah, but what about us being kidnapped? Who said you were kidnapped? You were out on a drunk. You understand? Drunk? Do you mean to say you're going to pass up this story? You were out on a drunk. <laughs> 